So today we'll be starting our next topic, subsequent debits, delivery cost, and credit memos. So the topics that going we're going to cover today they are enter additional cost as subsequent debit, account movements during subsequent debit, enter planned delivery cost for an invoice, enter unplanned delivery cost during invoice receipt, add items without reference to a purchase order during invoicing. Enter an invoice without reference to a purchase order. Enter a credit memo referencing a purchase order. Reverse an invoice document and enter a credit, a subsequent credit and also perform GRIR clearing account maintenance. So first of all, first of all, we'll start with uh, first topic for today is um, subsequent debits and credits. So first of all, we'll start with a business example that where we're going to use this scenario for subsequent debits and credits. So occasionally you receive invoices or credit memos from your vendors that refer to transactions that have already been settled. Your company wants to use subsequent debit credit to process these documents. All right. So what that means is um, once the invoices has been settled okay so your vendor has sent you uh, some reference to previous invoice okay that you know probably they need uh, we need to pay them more money or we need to get the money back from the vendor so in that case what we do is we create the subsequent debit and credit now let's see more theory about uh, what is subsequent debit and credit first then we'll do the practicals so a subsequent debit arises if another invoice or credit memo is received after a transaction has already been settled. For example, a vendor accidentally invoices you earlier for a price that is too low. So he send you a second invoice for the difference. You must enter this second item as a subsequent debit item if the PO item has already been invoiced. Okay, so they have sent you that um, they have accidentally uh, invoiced you earlier, which was uh, for too low, and now they need more money from us. So in that case, they will send you another invoice. <clears throat> in this case, because we have already settled the previous invoices, everything is done, now we need to create a subsequent debit in that case. Another case can be a vendor has accidentally invoiced you a price that is too high. Okay, price is too high. So he sends a credit memo for the difference. You must enter a credit memo as subsequent credit. That means if they need, uh, if we need to pay them, uh, uh, if we need to, so let's see the first example here. So they will, we need to do the subsequent debit when they have sent us a less amount, low amount earlier, which was our actually higher amount. So they will send us a difference. That means when we need to pay them the money, when we need one company has to pay the money to the vendor, that will be subsequent debit. When we need to take the money from the vendor, that will be subsequent credit. Right? So you need to remember the rule. Credit is when we need to pay them. Um, and sorry, credit is when we need to take the money from the vendor because we paid extra and credit uh, and debit is when we need to pay them. So Here if you see this slide here, here you can see for example, um, so say we have, uh, we created a purchase order something for 50 pieces and this is the amount. And the, later on we have done the invoice received for the same price and quantity. Later on the vendor will send you another invoice. They will say okay, there are maybe you know, there are 20 pieces we need to settle or something for any reason. In that case, you need to enter a second invoice. Now, this is invoice depending on of its whether they they asking us to send them money or whether they are supposed to send us money will be creating a subsequent debit and credit. So, let us see this one practically. So. 
first of all what i will do i will create a purchase order so let me quickly create a purchase order and I will save it so it will generate a purchase order number that I can copy from here and I can paste that here now we will do the goods, goods received my go now it's all good post it so here we have done as a second step which is goods received third step is your Miro which is invoice received Miro. for the same normal invoicing Enter your date here. Date here. And enter PO number. Press enter. Um, okay, it's showing two lines. I know what is second line. Just ignore. Let me fix the why there are two lines. I will talk about this one later on in today's class. this one because of that now I'll do the marrow still doing the same okay let me create an new sales order first, uh, purchase order first I'll be using the other material for now and I will make sure there's no delivery cost ok looks good, press enter save or note down the number do my go Now we'll do the Miro. Okay, that's good. So finally we'll do the invoicing and here I will enter the amount, whatever 10, the price, enter the date, looks good and do the posting. Press enter again. and now it generated a invoicing document we'll click on the message at the bottom and that is the document number for Miro now if I look at the purchase order history you can see that's the in goods receipt that's the invoice receipt now what we need to do is suppose customer has said that um, in the previous invoice the maybe the price is too low okay so they will send us here the first example the price may be too low and they will send us another invoice okay my company has received another invoice from the vendor and we need they're saying that we need to pay them some amount okay so in that case because we have already settled this purchase order starting from purchase order up to the invoicing 